Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. Come spend a little time with us this evening. We're gonna be cooking a little supper and getting up our potatoes. It's the first time that I can ever remember in my lifetime anyway, getting up Irish potatoes before the dog days. Yeah, definitely the earliest, oh yeah, the earliest we've ever got them. Yes, yeah, the earliest I can remember anyway, even back when I was a kid, I mean. I think the dry weather has a lot to do with that, but everything seems a little bit it's either one extreme or the other. We're either really early this or year really or we're really late on stuff. <laughs> yeah. so. so tonight for supper, we're going to be having some baked chicken legs. Angie's going to go check the sweet corn. We may possibly be having some fresh sweet corn. I cooked some fresh green beans and new potatoes last night. Have some leftovers from that. And maybe we'll have some stewed squash. So first thing I want to do, I've had my chicken legs soaking in some buttermilk and these are chicken legs from our chickens that we process here. Now I've got me a little bowl of self-rising flour here that I've put some salt, pepper, and Italian seasoning in. Just roll my chicken legs in it. I'm gonna go ahead and sit these on my baking sheet here. And I'm gonna let these sit in the fridge until I'm ready to cook them. I'm gonna let them sit at least about 20 minutes, something like that. Before we get started with the potatoes, um, you know, we'll be digging them with the tractor, with a potato, potato plow behind the tractor. And um, in order to do that, you need to bush hog the vines first and get all that mess up there on top cleaned up. So that's what we're gonna go do now. <laughs> potato patch. What's left of it? You can see the vines are dead. Um, not much left of them at all. They've actually really cooked a lot in just the last day or two. Um, but I want to get all this buckwheat and everything that's coming up in here. I want to get all that bush hog down. Um, right here's my wooden stakes that had the bone sauce on them. I may actually pull those up before I bush hog. But yeah, I pretty much just want to run the bush hog over this and keep it up high enough that I'm not beating down in the dirt, but you know, just straddling that row and cutting back all the brush and everything across the top there. chicken in the oven. So I've got my oven set on 400 degrees. I'm going to let these cook for probably 25-ish minutes, something like that, till they get done. So now we're going to go ahead and get our squash cut up. Our stewed squash. I also make fried squash. I think I had somebody a while back asking in the comments. Yes, I do make fried squash too occasionally. 
But I really enjoy stewed squash. throw our onions into our squash. Now we're going to cover this with some water. Go ahead and cut our heat on. Let that get to simmering pretty good. Y'all know I like black pepper, so I'm going to throw it to it here. Just going to put a little butter in there. There we go. I hope y'all were able to see just how dusty it is out here. This is dry the bone. But you can see how it cuts the vines down. And that just keeps everything from getting tangled up too bad around your plow when you come through here and bust this row out. I'll give y'all a quick update on our watermelons. Our carrots actually are turning out pretty good. We need to dig them. They've, they've got flopped really bad. But we've dug several and they're they're doing all right compared to, I mean, considering the conditions they've been growing in. Then the watermelons, they're trying their best to hang on here. We've actually been taking water up here the last couple of days and just watering right around the root of the plant. We've got baby watermelons in here. Over there is one. If you look around, you see watermelons everywhere in here. But they are struggling. I think this, uh, this dry weather, right here's another one. That's a nice looking watermelon right there. I think this dry weather's taking a toll on them for sure, but we have, like I said, been watering. Right there. See how bad the leaves are curled up? I mean, we water and water and water these things. But it's it's actually at the point right now where anything anything that's up here in the field that's somewhere we don't have a good way to water like we've been taking water up here and watering around we've been putting about a gallon of water around each plant um, for the past two evenings and it's helped but it's just at the point now that all the dirt around it's so dry that it's just sapping that right away from it you know it's not we're just we need rain. I don't know no other way to put it. Um, and I'll give you another real quick update on the sourdough. Yep, ain't nothing changed since the last time I saw it. Look, we haven't had any rain at all since we planted this, and that ground is just just dust. So who knows if that seed was any good or not? We're honestly at the point in the year where, I think this has been in the ground a month now, just about. Um, but we're at that point in the year where, you know, it's it's getting too late to plant sorghum. It won't have time to make. So if this right here don't come up, then we may just not have sorghum patch this year. So I don't know, we'll see how that goes. But anyways, I gotta get back to the house and work on some stuff to get ready to dig these tape. I'll use my little Kubota here to dig the taters with, and I just need to unhook the hay spear and put the tater plow on. So in the years past, we've been using an old tobacco trailer to put our potatoes in when we dig them. Um, but this year, I've got this little trailer right here, and I think this is what we're going to use this time. The only thing I got to do is clean out some of them leaves and stuff, and I'm going to rig me up a board right across the back right there so nothing falls out. So I'll just, I'll just screw it on. It ain't going to be nothing fancy. That trailer right there actually came with the Kubota cultivating tractor when I bought it. 
it all came kind of like a package deal, so I'm gonna finally put that thing to some use. So I probably actually need a little bit bo a bigger board there, or like another one up above it, but now well, I think that'll hold what potatoes we're going to put in there. I highly recommend anybody, if you get a chance to get your hand on some of these milk crates here, these are just old retired milk crates, do it. These are the most handy things ever. We're going to use them to put our potatoes in, but I mean, use them for everything. Strap them to the front of your foil, strap them on the back of your side by side, put them on the bucket or a tractor or whatever, and just throw stuff in them. Well, let's go out here and check the corn. I really think we might have some ears ready to go today. We might be able to get us a few out of here. So, usually when that tassel right there is brown, that means you got corn just about ready. And if you can see how those are still tight in there, so that means that corn's probably still just a little bit young, but I'm gonna pull it anyway. That right there is a good sound. I love the sound to hear corn breaking off the stalk. But let's uh, let's shuck this and see what it looks like. And if it looks good, I'm gonna be pulling some more. Look at there, Lord have mercy. So to most people, that's probably still a little bit in the young stage. But y'all, that's, to me, that, that right there is prime eating right there. And that should be more than enough for us and the kids for tonight's supper. Y'all don't know how excited I am about this. <laughs> I've been waiting ever since I put that seed in the ground to get some fresh corn on the cob. There ain't nothing like it. So this is Honey Select corn right here. And as you've probably heard me and Megan talk about before, this right here is one of our favorite varieties there is. Look right there. Had we had a wet year, these kernels would have been completely filled out plumb to the end. But that's still, that's a that's a very good looking ear of corn. You can't complain with that right there at all. That's plumb pretty in it. I know what we're gonna be doing this weekend. Putting up corn. Putting up corn. That's all right. We're getting up potatoes today and gonna be putting up corn here, this, I guess, in a couple of days. In a couple of days, yep. Yeah. Cause it could stand to go just a tad bit longer. Oh yeah. But that, in my opinion, that right, that ear you're holding right there, that's perfect. Perfect, yep. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Oh, I know. I'm so excited, I can't wait. <laughs> Usually with fresh corn, I just boil it, you know, in some salt water. And I boil it, once it starts boiling, about five, six minutes. I don't boil it very long. Um, and that usually does it pretty good. 
So with my baked chicken, I forgot to put the olive oil on it, but I added it later. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. I'm gonna put some of that jelly on that biscuit there. This is squash that I just found out I like this way. Before this, I was just a fried squash kind of man. Leftover green beans. And here comes the staple of the meal. We making room for two ears on this one. Look at the texture of that jelly. It's not too bad, is it? It's perfect. Vanilla is good. All right. Let's go enjoy this. Boy, it's gonna be tough getting up taters after eating all this. Ain't it? <laughs> you gotta, you gotta uh, fill yeah. your tank up so you can go work. Yeah. Well, while I'm waiting on Andy to get up here on the tractor, look across the road here, y'all. Check out our field corn. Considering the rough start that it had and the rough <laughs> weather that it's had between being too wet, too dry, and all in between, I think it's actually looking pretty good. Red potatoes and what? Red, red, it's, uh, what are the red? Red Norland and, uh, Yukon Gold. That's right. Red, the red and yellow potatoes. Yeah, I can't Put remember. Put it simply. <laughs> I can't remember what's on which end. I want to say the yellow ones are out here, but I, I don't remember. I guess we'll see. Yeah, we're, we're fixing to find out. Well, and usually, so, I don't feel like we get as much from those plants as we do the I don't think other so. ones. So this one may be. And I tell you this, just by the vines, I don't think this row is going to turn off very good at all. Because it never, the whole year long, the vines never looked that good in this, in this bottom row. Now the rest of them were fair. Right. None of them looked great all year long. But I think it's the weather. I, I think that's what contributed to that this time. But anyways. I let's, guess we'll find out. Let's sink a plow and see what we got. All right. So guys, if you've never used a potato plow or never harvested potatoes this way, it's simple. Where, where we've got these rows ridged up like we do, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna drive straight down the center of that row and I'll have to go out and back it, you know, probably three times at least. We usually try to go right down the middle. Sometimes we miss the row, sometimes we hit it. Um, but then I'll go down one side and down the other side, you know, just over just a little bit each time just to make sure we hit the whole thing and uncover all the potatoes. Doing it this way, some potatoes do get wrapped up and get lost under the dirt. Um, and I guess that's just one, one of the downfalls, one of the downfalls to doing it the easy way. Um, of course I lose potatoes even when I dig them by hand too. So <laughs> anyways, let's, uh, let's see what turns out. Yep, the other one's on this end. Look out there, they already picking them up. So y'all, the deal is, we have a, a deal with Jacob worked out that if he does good, well, of course, Maggie has to do good too, but Jacob's reward, if he gets, if he does good right here about getting potatoes up and doing what we ask him to do, he's gonna get to plow up the last row of potatoes. And so he's, he's raring to go. So. <laughs> well, we, we explained it to him this way. You gotta learn how to do the hard physical labor first before you get to do the fun stuff. That's right. Yeah, let's put these red potatoes and the yellow ones in the basket and keep them separate from the white potatoes. Well, see, yeah. them, them right there is yellow potatoes. 
Yeah, those are yellow. I believe this is the driest dirt I've ever dug out oh, potatoes in. You ought to seen the dust flying when you was going through You should have seen the dust flying when I was bush hogging. Oh, I bet so. Red. That potato yeah, there is done right. Red. That's right. Good job. There's a little bit of moisture down in there, but it ain't much, is it? Nope. Not much at all. Yep, I don't think these yellow taters here, they... I guess they was suffering from some water. That one got a worm in it. Thank you, dear. All right. Is that all the yellow ones? Megan, I don't think these things were done making yet. But they just dried up. Yeah, because they're stuck to the They're roots. stuck to the roots good. Yep. But the vines were just oh, about gone. They were kaput. I got four of these out before I get to the yellow ones. The red ones. I got two red ones in the house. Where are the I think these red norlins, they sure are a pretty potato. They are pretty. But they don't keep good. They don't keep good, but they're good while they last. That's why we don't plant many of them. I'm interested in seeing how well they keep this time anyways where we're getting them up, sir. Yeah, I'm a little worried about that, honestly. I was thinking about it, and I'm like, they're going to have to sit in the heat longer than usually do well i mean if they stayed in the ground that rot they'll end up sprouting back because you know if we ever if we go to getting rain they'll start growing back in a hurry right i guess that's all the red ones Whole thing just wanted to make anything at all. There is some decent ones in here though. They look a little bigger once I get down here and start picking them up versus riding that tractor. I got some funny shaped ones. I guess the ground got so hard. They didn't grow right. Yeah, they're funny shaped. You know, they've they're definitely right. got past that new potato stage though, you know, so like, Maggie, all right. I guess they're, uh, they're mature because they ain't got that real tender skin on them. Right. So hopefully they do keep pretty good. I'll run through it a couple more times and we'll see what comes out of it.
Is that all of them? That's all I've seen. They must have been leftover potatoes if it had a red one in it. Cause we couldn't hardly tell them apart when we planted them. That's a pretty good looking row of potatoes. We had 10 rows last year and had six rows this year. Look like fangling potatoes. They are fangling potatoes. How did a fangling get in there? <laughs> I don't know. They did. That's funny. What that was, but it stopped me in my tracks. Was it a rock? Well, never done that before. That but I rock? hung something out there in that field. Stopped me in my tracks and it bent the plow. That piece of bar right there is supposed to be straight. And uh, it hung it hard enough that it bent that plow. I can't say that I've ever been a potato plow before, and as many times as I've plowed this field. I've never ever hit a rock out there in the middle of it, so that's strange. See, it's pointing straight up and down now. It's supposed to be laying more flat like that. But we've only got one more row, so hopefully it'll work, work good. Pull around to the row. Whoa. Okay. I'm gonna put it in low range for you. All right, look, I'm gonna show you something. You see the ridge of that row? You keep looking forwards and you keep that right there, silver hood ornament lined up with the center of that row. Okay. Now, if you look backwards, you're gonna turn. So you wanna look, drive straight and drive forwards.
Good job. Alright, pick it up. Look down through there. I believe you hit it perfect. Yep, you hit it dead on. Good job. Alright, like I said, go to one side just a little ways. Then we'll pick up the potatoes. Then go to the other side just a little ways. So what I typically do... You see the ridge right beside the ditch, right up there? Let your uh, hood ornament line up with that. All right, let it down to five. Five seems to be the right number on that lift. Pick it up. Alright, just wait for us to get them up. Then come back and go down the other side. Boy, you sure are concentrating. Well, the potatoes are out of the ground for this year. Um, typically y'all, I would be in a hurry to get up here and work this spot up, get a cover crop sowed on it, but it's so dry, I'm just, I ain't gonna do nothing until it rains. So I guess we're just gonna leave it just like that till we get us a good shower of rain and then I'll come up here and work it up and get me, uh, I'll probably sow some buckwheat and maybe some cow peas or something on it this for the summer. I'm not sure yet, but anyways. We're gonna get them back to the house. We'll show you what we got when we get there. And we'll show you what we're gonna do with them until we actually put them up to where they'll stay for the rest of the year. So, here's this year's tater harvest. Don't look too shabby at all. It really don't. Now that it's back up here and I'm looking at it, it looks pretty good. This ain't bad at all. Um, this is definitely more potatoes than it'll last us a year, so I think we'll have a few to spread around. Oh, yeah. But, um... Now, I mean, the biggest difference I see was we have more... Our average is probably that, maybe a little bit smaller, which is still a good potato. We got some bigger than that, like you can see that one right there. That's a good, right there's one of the bigger ones. But a lot of times, our potatoes are more... A lot of them are on the bigger side. Like that right there. Yeah. But... I'm perfectly fine with medium-sized potatoes. I am too, and I, I'm just comparing the years. <laughs> I, I truly feel like if we if we could have continually got rain, these would have been bigger because the little the tuber or feeder or whatever you want to call it going to the potato on a lot of them wasn't completely dead yet. However, the vines were, and so you know I I'm just going to say they 
got to the point they dried up and yeah they weren't gonna make any more make make any bigger but, but this, this is, is be nice. yeah it's beautiful it is i'm happy i am very happy what we got so what we've got we're going to store them in here now they'll lay on this trailer right here for i don't know a week or two three to really whenever we get time to do something with them um so typically we store our potatoes inside this stall right here where the sun never shines but yeah until, it's like back up in there yeah until then they will lay back here i'll leave them on the trailer we're gonna back them back here in this corner as you can see it's dark back here no sunlight no nothing like that can get to them it's still open so they can have airflow and they can sort of cure just a little bit before we actually pile them on top of each other and store them for good. So they will stay right here for a few weeks. Now we are going to take some burlap sacks and throw over top of them. I wonder why them pigs beat that feeder as fast as they do now. I think they get bored. They feed it all the time. When I look, and there's feet coming down. I think they just like to hear it beat. <laughs> Everything set up the way we want it here. Um, we've got burlap sacks pulled over top of the potatoes. Um, so that'll allow any light that comes in here to not really get on the potatoes. That's the main thing about storing potatoes. Do not let sunlight get on them. Um, that'll start to turn them green and make them go bad. But anyways, they will stay back here for two, three weeks. Till we have time to... Yeah, honestly, till we have time. Yeah. Through this hot spell, I may leave them back here. That might be the better thing to do instead of stacking them up on top of each That's other. That's true. Putting them in a, in a pile. So they'll probably stay back here a while and get through this here hot spell that we've got going on. And then we'll put them up where I just showed you and let them store. And that'll be where they stay from then till next spring when we get ready to replant. I hope y'all really enjoyed today's video. Hope you might have learned a little something. And anyways, till we see y'all on the next one. Y'all have a good one. Have a good one.